I will say that this semester, I hope, I hope you've all had uh, a good, fun time, and I, I hope you all have felt that you've learned, uh, you know, something or other about multimedia, and more importantly, taking multimedia and using it to, to convey some information and, and to, to tell a story, as I said before. I will say honestly, um, this is the first semester that I've taught this class the way that I envision teaching it. All right, and let me let me explain to you what I meant by that. Uh, what I meant by that is, obviously, most classes have most most CISS classes have, have sort of a conceptual component, and they have a hands-on component, right? Um, you have to understand a little bit about de designing good web pages in, in the intro to web development. And you have to understand a little bit about uh, accessibility and, and what makes for a well-designed page and what's the proper way to code and so on. And then there's the actual going out and doing it. And, and in all the classes, there's sort of that conceptual framework and there's hands-on. In this class, the hands-on part is very, very critical. So what I've tried to do is give you plenty of opportunity to practice those things via um, practice exercises and, and little things where we just go and you can make an audio recording, it doesn't have to be anything serious, it can just be goofy or take and edit the picture to match some adjective or whatever, you know, just getting you used to the tools. And, and I hope I've also given enough of the sort of conceptual framework. What does this have to do with anything? What this has to do with is my plans for the last, um, essentially, two and a half weeks, right? Because this is week 13, correct? So we have today, we have two class sessions the next week, and we have two class sessions the following week. So that's five more class sessions, which isn't a lot of time, all right? Here's what my plans are. I don't know if I have anything more to say about video, unless people have specific questions. Uh, we went over sort of the, uh, the, the idea behind what makes for good video. Um, we've shown a little bit how to use uh, Windows Movie Maker. Other video applications are very similar and work in a very similar way, all right? And I, I, we gave, I think, an opportunity to do some playing around in class, all right? The next, the last topic is advanced animation, which I think is important for two perspectives. Number one, um, you have an advanced animation assignment. Uh, number two, you might want to do some sort of scripting uh, for your final project. And because of that, I want to spend a little bit of time on that. I also know that for some of you that, that don't have a programming background or, or haven't done much programming or any programming, that it would be very difficult for me to like demand you to do extensive sort of action script code. So I want to introduce that to you. You know, I want to show you some examples and talk about some of the things that you can do, but I don't necessarily want to spend uh, tons of time on it. So what I'm planning on doing is this, is trying to gear the last two weeks of class after today towards you completing your assignment. Which means that what we'll probably do is we'll come in here, we'll talk, I'll see if, I, if, if you have any pressing questions, that is questions that are keeping you from getting your project done, like gee, I don't remember how to do such and such, how to make a button work or whatever, all right? I'll address those uh, and then we'll break for lab. In fact, even if, um, if you're not really interested in the topic that someone's asking, you know, you can say, yeah, I want to hear this, and just go to lab and work on it, all right? So I aim to do that for like the next four classes. Convene here, not necessarily have a formal lecture, but instead be responsive to your questions uh, about that. And if you don't have any questions, you know, I'll also open up the lab so you can go in there and work. And then when I'm done answering questions in there, I'll migrate over to lab. That'll give you plenty of opportunity to work on the stuff that you need to do to get done. I do feel bad. It's always tough scheduling assignments, and we do have two assignments due at the end uh, as long, along with the, 
the final project. So I do, I do want to sort of, in a way, make that up to you by giving you ample time in lab to do that. Uh, does that sound agreeable to everyone? That's the way to go. That's the way to go? Okay, great. Great. All right. And I know, if those of you miss my long lectures, you can always go to YouTube and re-watch them if you have a favorite <laughs> one. Or you can, you can watch from another class or, or whatever, you know, if, if, you miss, if you miss the sound of my voice too much. All right. Uh, action script. I do want to talk a little bit about action script because action script is one of those things that you can use to sort of elevate your flash code from just being like an animation to being an interactive uh, uh, animation, all right? Because through action script, you can actually um, take the stuff that you create on the page and program, all right? What do I mean by program? I mean by program, I mean control. Do something with it. Stop the animation, start the animation move something across the screen, all right? For example, I don't know if you've ever seen, there's a million different variations of this, but um, there's, a, there's a game where like little flies kind of fly across your screen and you've got to like pop them, you know, by clicking on them with your mouse or poking them with your finger if it's a touch screen, you know. One person put it in front of a frog and watched the frog go crazy trying to eat the fly which I thought was kind of cool, but at any rate, um, obviously there, if we did it the way we've been doing our animations, that game wouldn't be too much fun, right? If the fly flew the exact same path every time, right? What makes that game interesting is you can take that fly and you can animate it, but you can animate it in sort of an unpredictable way. So you can have it move around in a random path, all right? So you're doing really nothing different than we did, except Instead of coding it, or I'm sorry, instead of controlling it by doing like a frame-by-frame -frame animation or tweens or whatever, you actually write code to go and do that. All right? So what we're, uh, we're going to do is we're going to examine a couple of different ways that we could do things via our code to add and enhance our animations. One of the things that we can do, we've already looked at, and we'll probably spend a few minutes looking at it again, and then we'll look at a slightly different way of doing it. And what I'm referring to is um, adding some sort of navigation to your pages. So let's go and let me call up these examples. Again, if you're not, it would be great if you attempted some sort of action script somewhere this semester. But do keep in mind that for your advanced animation, you can either add action script or you can make your animation more extensive. Um, and again, I'm going to also prove that I'm very bad with names again. But the fellow that I thought was Nick, <laughs> all right, that did the drum tuning thing, the guy that sits there, uh, he was doing a great animation on Monday when you folks were out there filming uh, for that. He was doing like a little spaceship flying around and all that. That is one thing I guess I, I would say in addition to giving you work time, take time to see what other people are doing. You know, this will be the first and only class I'm going to tell you, don't keep your eyes on your own work, right? Let your eyes wander and see what other people are doing. Not to steal stuff from them, of course, but to understand what they're doing and maybe get some ideas and maybe get some uh, input on how to do certain certain techniques. So anyhow, let's bring up the, some of these examples are with the gallery. Uh, some of them are with the uh, advanced animation. Right, this is one where I think I've gathered everything and put it in one place. I even labeled my folders, which is amazing. All right. 
Now I'm going to talk about the HTML solution. We've talked about uh, that. That's pretty straightforward. Nothing really um, flash about that. You simply have a, a series of linked HTML pages that all happen to contain a little flash animation. And by doing that, you, you've achieved your navigation through your flash. Um, I am going to talk about doing everything in one scene. This is the example that we've looked at before. And I'll bring it up. And we'll run it and, and see how it, how it behaves. Maybe we'll just stare at the screen for the rest of the hour. Okay, we showed this example before, but I do want to review it. Um, again, if you recall, the way this one works is we have a couple of thumbnails that when the user clicks on them, it pops up another pops up the, the appropriate image. That's sort of a way to do navigation, like for a photo gallery or whatever. Now, I just did a very basic thing of popping up that page. You actually could do more extensive animation. In other words, when you go to a frame, it could go and do a tween to fade in that image, or, or fade it in and fade it out, or whatever. Let's look at the code that accomplishes this. First of all, again, how do you get to the code? You know, the little A on the, the code uh, or on the layer, rather, indicates that um, there's action script associated with it. So I'll go to Window, and and Actions, there we go. And we'll look to see what we're doing here. There's actions associated with the frame. Funny thing is, is it shows a little A, oh, the, the, the code is on layer one. I stand corrected. Um, first thing I do is I issue the stop command. What that does is that stops the animation. All right. Um, that way, you know, every animation that you've done prior to this has started up immediately when you've gone onto the page. Right, or this stops it. I then go and I add an event listener. An event listener, again, what an event listener is, is it is telling um, something on your page, something on your animation, to be expecting something to happen. All right? In this case, it's telling T1 and we'll look at what T1 is in a minute here, is telling T1 that it might get clicked on by the mouse. That's what mouse event dot click means. And what, 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 what's more, it tells it what to do when you do get clicked on by the mouse. And that is, do the chunk of code that I've given the name of T click handler. All right? Let's, well, one thing I think is important for beginning programmers is to know what part of this I made up, and what part of this is part of the language that's built in. T1 is a name that I made up, and we'll look and see what T1 is in a minute. Add event listener is built into action script. That's an action script command. Mouse event click is an action script value as well. I didn't make that up. And finally, T1 click handler is also something I made up. Um, you can notice. Uh, you probably can see, essentially, the stuff that I made up is in black. The stuff that is built in the language is in blue. All right, if you can if you can distinguish a difference between the two. Now, what is T1? T1 is this little movie clip that I had, the thumbnail. I went and I created a symbol for it, 
And I gave the symbol an instance name. And that's important to keep in mind, that when you make a symbol, you're sort of making something that you could clone and you could copy a bunch of times. If you remember back in one of the really, or really early examples, I made a worm crawl against the uh, across the screen, right? Well, I can make two worms crawl across or three worms or whatever. There's only one worm symbol, but I made five or six copies of it. Uh, the way that they refer to that is each one of them is, is called an instance of it. Well, if I'm going to program it, I have to give the instance a name. And in this case, I gave this the name of T1, I gave this the name of T2. So, this line of code, what it's saying is, that symbol should be expecting someone to click on it. It's listening for, it's waiting for, anticipating, all right, um, someone to click on it. And when someone clicks on it, this is what you're going to do. And I've defined the function here. Now, the function in this case is very simple. I simply say go to and stop to, all right. What does that mean? That means go to and stop the second frame on this scene, all right. So go to and stop the second frame on this, uh, on this scene. Now, one thing I would probably do a little bit different is I don't think I divide the layers in the best way. I would put the thumbnails and the action script on one layer and put the bigger images on the other. I think I kind of put the action script in, in the wrong place, but eh, yeah, it works. If I was doing this over, I would put the action script on the same layer as the thumbnails. All right. So, I go and click on this, that, this function makes sure that it's expecting to be clicked on, and call this code, that code calls, is called, and I go to and stop frame two. Now, what can go wrong with this? Seems simple enough, all right? What can go wrong with this is a couple things. First of all, you do have to remember to give your symbols an instance name, right? So that won't, regardless of what name that's called, you have to give it an instance name that, that matches it in your code. All right? You have to match everything. You have to get, obviously, the commands right in the ActionScript language. And they are case sensitive. So if I were to say, add action, add event listener, and I do capital I instead of lowercase i, notice it changed from, from blue to black because it no longer recognizes it as a valid command. So it thinks it's something I made up. All right. So all of the commands in ActionScript are case sensitive. There, lowercase i, now it knows what that is. Likewise, if I were to say T1, capital T, T1 with a capital T is different than T1 with a lowercase t. All right. So the biggest things, the biggest likelihood for mistakes in this are being off a little bit on your spelling. That is either with a command or with the things that you've given names to. Forgetting to give your uh, symbols instance names. All right. Um, and not matching up. For example, I said when this is clicked on, it's going to call T1 click handler. So I got to call this T1 click handler. All right. I got to make up the name T1 click handler, but I have to do it the same in both places. Otherwise, when I click on it, it's going to try to do something that, that doesn't exist. All right. Let me show you what happens if you do something wrong. Let's say, for example, I create this function, I call it T one click handler, but I use a lowercase h. Let's run this and see what happens. First of all, I didn't expect this, but it makes sense. If it doesn't know what to do, it bails. All right. In other words, it got an error on this line because there's no such thing as that. So it didn't know what to do, so it stopped executing my script. 
So one sign that you've done something wrong is if like your stops don't look like they're working and it just goes and continues anyhow because if it doesn't know what to do, it doesn't like, well, gee, I'll try this. It, it just throws up its arms metaphorically and gives up. Um, other thing that could go wrong if you got the function wrong Same thing. Other times it will give you an error message, and if you look, you can see the error message that it gives you. All right. That should be reviewed. That's kind of the stuff that we did before, and you should be able to use this. Uh, another thing that you can do is, one thing I mentioned is you can use scenes to sort of uh, accomplish this as well. Scenes are good if you have like longer, bigger, more intricate uh, navigation. So let me go and call up the scene one. Yes? I have a question. You said that you would have done things differently. You would have done action script and thumbnails on the same. On the same frame, yeah. On the same frame. But what or the same, same layer. Yeah, same layer. So what would you have done? What did you do there? I had the I had the thumbnails on one layer, and I had the action script on the other. I had the action script on the layer that, I had the action script on the layer that had the big images. I put the action script on the layer that had the thumbnails. Small point, but you put it on the thumbnails. No, I didn't put it on the thumbnails. Oh, you I would put it on have the big. It. I would have put it on there. Okay. All right. Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Um, so, when you refer to the layer two, was that in the, the end of the function script where it says go to and stop in parentheses two? Yeah, that two represents well, well, not the layer. It represents the frame. So let, let's let's call that one back up. I, I closed it too quick. All right, if I look at the action script for this, by the way, if you click compiler errors, that's where it shows you the errors. Um, notice for the, the first thumbnail, it says go to and stop two. For the other one, it says go to and stop three. So it goes to the third frame. So that's all, yeah. Uh, you, in general, when you're moving around animation, you move from frame to frame or from scene to scene. Because all the layers are always there, you know, uh, unless they're invisible or whatever. Yeah. Now, to your question, yeah, what I should have done is I should have went and deleted it from here and put the action script here because... Layer 2 is the layer with the thumbnails on it. I had it originally on layer 1 where the big pictures are. So does it work? Yeah, it'll work. It works either way. I'm just saying from an organizational standpoint, right. organizing my code, it would be better if it's on there. That way everything related to the navigation is in one place. I have a navigation layer and that's, it does everything. All right. Let's look at this other one our next one, where I have two scenes. on scene one that takes me to scene two. All right. Not terribly earth shattering. Let's go and test this. All right. I have a ball that goes across the screen. When I click on scene two, it takes me to that. I unfortunately don't have anything that takes you back to scene one. All right. 
the code for this is much the same as the code for the other one. The only difference is, is that the, the places I'm going is I'm not going to another um, frame within the same scene. I'm going to a different scene. So let's look at that code. And that code is same thing. I add an, uh, an act event listener. That's the problem with teaching this and Java on the same day. Java calls them action listeners, where Flash they call them event listeners. Adding an event listener, same way I did before, right? I said, you know, that thing called scene two, what's the thing called scene two? This little text that says scene two. I say, be expecting someone to click on it, and when they do, call this code. The only difference between this and the other function is I say, go to and play, Frame one, but frame one of scene two. All right, so I put in the name of the scene. When you create a scene, you can give it a name, and, and that one's named scene two. So I say go to and play scene two. All right. Notice in the other example, I did go to and stop. That's why I just wanted to pop up the image. And this one, I say go to and play because there's there was a transition where the the square faded in or faded out. I probably have action script on that last frame when it hits the last frame to stop, like I do in this case on the first frame when the ball travels, when the ball hits the end of the line. It stops. All right, that way it doesn't just loop endlessly or it doesn't right away go to the next scene. All right. Really not tons of difference between this and that. That's more of an organizational thing. Remember we talked about it before. That um, if you keep it all on one scene, you're simply going to a certain frame on, on that scene. If you're going between scenes, you then go to that frame on a different scene. Now, one advantage of keeping it all on the same scene is you can write sort of one navigation layer. right? You can create a navigation layer with all your thumbnails or all your buttons or whatever and have that visible all the time and then just go to different, advance to different frames on the timeline. With different scenes, you'd have to actually go and repeat that navigation on each scene, right? Because there's no way for me to use the navigation on the first scene, on the second scene. But for some things, it makes sense. If you had really involved animations, I would say the scenes are probably the way to do it. Let's look at This option. Is there no easy shortcut then when you're using scenes to be able to cut and paste? Not that I'm aware of, no. Well, there's other, using that technique, no. The other shortcut would be um, some of the thing, you know, when I talk about having a flash and a flash container. That, I guess you'd call that a possibly a shortcut. All right, this isn't using, this is providing a, a next and a previous uh, link. These are supposed to be buttons for next and, and previous. So when I run this, um, when I click that, I get the next, next, previous, next. So I can go back and forth between them. Now this isn't too dazzling because there's only two pictures, but you could easily extend this to a, a bunch of pictures. Let's look at how I do this. First of all, what kind of control is this guy? Is this blue circle? It's a button. How do you know it's a button? Because you click on it. Well, the other ones, these are buttons. These, uh, these you click on. You, these are thumbnails that you click on, and they're not buttons. Yeah, uh, well, the, the whole thing is the cursor changed the hand, and I also did a mouse over effect. So in other words, if I double click on this, notice I have an up and over property. Remember, you can make a button look different depending on the state that it's in, when the mouse is over it versus the mouse not being over it. All right, whereas this, being a movie, it doesn't change when you have your mouse over it. Now, let's look at the action script here. All right, 
I have the same things I've done before. 